Boy, the Cowboys sure have the Longhorns number, don't they? The only problem is they make them play the second half. For the second consecutive year, the Cowboys squander a big first half lead and just end up with more frustration. Everyone expected a blowout, just not this kind. It's caught by the long ones, wide open, good night, Vienna! Mike Hamilton dominated on the ground. Straight ahead to the 45, to the 40, to his right, to the 35, 30, 25, 20. Al Pena struck from the air. Pena back to pass, goes quickly over the middle. The pass is tipped, and it's caught by the one ones to the 10, to the 5. Pistols firing, touchdown, the one ones. Our game plan was executed to perfection in that first half. But whatever Mac Brown said in the locker room, it worked. Texas scored early. Vince Young goes 81 yards. And often. Keeps it, running straight ahead to the five, and he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. And by the end of the third quarter, the Longhorns had the lead for good. Has time, throws over the middle, and the pass is caught. Touchdown, Texas. It wore us down a little bit. Doesn't have anything to do with, with uh, adjustments or X's nose, in my opinion. It wears down a little bit. We lost, so I mean that's a negative, but we're going to get better. And our goal right now is to win three games and go to a bowl. So Mike Gundy still looking for his first win in the Big 12 as a head coach. The Cowboys would have loved to get this one, knock off the number one team in the country. Still, they say they've got a lot they can build on heading into their bye week. Reporting from Boone Pickens Stadium, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Shaq, this weekend's trip to El Paso will have a huge effect on the final standings in Conference USA's West Division. A win by the Golden Hurricane puts them a very important full game ahead of the Miners. This is another step in terms of making a run at the championship and being in that game on December the 3rd. But this game doesn't guarantee you. If you win this game this week, that doesn't guarantee you you're going to be the Western Division champion. It's a monumental step in our quest to be the championship. Well, whenever you win uh, ball games, it builds confidence. And I think each game we've won this year, um, the confidence has kept building. And, um, you know, we're just trying to execute and go out and, and win each game. And they have won some games lately. As a matter of fact, they haven't lost since October 1st. By the way, a win this weekend makes TU officially bowl eligible. Reporting from Skelly Stadium, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Jeff Bardell can hit a golf ball a country mile and as straight as an arrow. And he can do it with one arm. It, it really is hard. It's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Jeff lost his right arm when his glove got stuck in this machine at a glass factory in his home state of North Carolina. Life changed just four days before he was due for freshman orientation. That was my first day working with this screw auger, and the glove on my right hand got caught in the machine. And as the machine was turning, my arm was getting pulled into the machine. When I think about it, sometimes it seems like a split second. Sometimes it seems like it was one second and it was gone. And then other times it seems like it was five or ten minutes. After losing his arm, he had to learn how to do everything all over again, from brushing his teeth to gripping a golf club. His secret? He uses his left thumb to stabilize the club instead of a right arm. A lot of those things are real challenges, um, but I'd say the hardest was, was definitely learning how to write. I still haven't learned how to clap yet. And once I figure that out, then, you know, I'll, I will have accomplished everything. Jeff doesn't just hit the ball really well for a player with two arms. He recently set a world record for the longest one-arm drive, 255 yards. 19 yards better than the previous record. I still think about it sometimes, and just to think that I've done something that nobody else in the world has ever done, it's a pretty cool feeling. When Jeff played at Rima Bible College, he was an eight handicap. Now he admits it's closer to 12. But in his view, handicaps are for golf scores, not for golfers. I believe I'm living proof that just because something bad happens to you doesn't mean your life ends. It just makes it a little more challenging, a little more fun. And that's what the game is really all about. In Broken Arrow, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Now, oh, you get started bright and early on Channel 2 at 11.30 tomorrow. Yeah, you know, Dallas is nice, but there's nothing quite like the chill of Kansas City, is there? The last two times this tournament was played here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, the Sooners were the team cutting down the nets. But this year, they've got the big target on their backs. They're the number one seed. Kansas City is, uh, you know, kind of has a Big 12 tournament feel to it. And OU knows the feeling pretty well. The Sooners have won this tournament three of the last four years, but they've never done it as the number one seed. 
Uh, we know it's strictly about business at this tournament. If we're um, one seed or a 12 seed, we're still going to try to play hard and go out here and win it. So, I mean, um, the seed, seeding, um, it really doesn't matter like what seed you are. We just want to go out here and win it. You guys have never been a number one seed in this tournament. Does it change the way you approach it or the way other people approach you? No. I mean, our attitude and effort this week in practice has been unbelievable. I mean, everyone's energy and enthusiasm and everything is running on a high right now. And our best practices have been this week. So, I mean, everyone's doing good. Are we ready to play? You know, we've, we've been here. We've enjoyed our season. We just we want to keep it going. Now, after their workout today, the Sooners stuck around to watch Nebraska play Missouri, watch Missouri beat Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Drew Lavender told me that he was going to stick around to watch this game because he gets something out of watching a team and scouting a team in person as opposed to just watching them on tape. All right, don't forget OU tomorrow at 1130 against Missouri. That wraps it up from here. We'll see you tonight at 10. They didn't go by all summer without thinking about it. Uh, sometime during the day, you know, it was a heartbreaking loss, and you know, I moved on. I've, I, you can't do anything about it now. Over and over, rerun episode of your worst TV show you can't stand. It's just you see it all the time. The last memory you have of it isn't a good one, so you want to get back in and try to replace that, improve, and, and show, hey, we're ready to go. Last year, the Golden Eagles earned the title as the best team not to make the NCAA tournament. They don't want that this year. They want to be in the field of 65. And Scott Sutton says this team is not only more determined than a year ago, it's also better. Uh, the most talented team that I've been associated with since I've been here. And, uh, you know, we, we have all the pieces. I think we can return this university back to where it was in its heyday with basketball as long as we stay humble. That's going to be the biggest key for us. Is it fair really to say this team is more determined to get to the NCAA tournament this year? Yeah, because everybody everybody had had the taste on the tip of their tongue, but they couldn't get a bite. Everybody know what, what we can have and what we can do. So everybody's going to try and come out and, and do their part and do their role. And hopefully this can be a real, real special year for us. Nobody in the Texas League has a hotter bat. It's just been one of those years that the ball finds my barrel, so it's good. Good enough for a batting average hovering around 350. The biggest difference is just confidence and just being, uh, you know, try not to do too much. Just see the ball, hit the ball, pretty simple, keeping it simple. Guys hitting like 343, you're trying to steal his bat or, you know, rub his batting gloves, anything like that? Uh, I, I try to, you know, tap his helmet, you know, get some of, that, get, get some of those hits from him. But, uh, no, nah, you know, I just go to him and say, keep, keep raking. And, uh, and that's it. We said that to each other every day. And uh, he's, he's doing it. Guys who hit like Spielborgs don't stay in the minors for long. And at this rate, he'll be in Colorado Springs before the season's over. As soon as we get to the big leagues, it's not like we're just happy to be there. I mean, we want, we want to be on a team that wins and that's competitive. And what we're learning here in the minors and, you know, in Tulsa is we're learning how to win. And hopefully that carries over to the big leagues. With the Drillers, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Local average Joes, and as Marty tells us, it's nerve-wracking for everyone. It can either be a dream or a total nightmare. Playing with a pro requires nerves of steel, or at the very least, an iron stomach. It was scary. <laughs> You know, you, you go out, and I've been playing golf since I was 12 years old, and I've played in a lot of tournaments, and you get nervous every time you go up to the first tee box, but man, when I walked up there with her, I was shaking. All I wanted to do was just not top the ball. It was like a dream. It's a rare chance to get to play with the you know, best woman player in the world, and uh, she was very gracious, very nice, so couldn't beat it. And you think it's nerve-wracking for the amateurs? It's not exactly a walk in the park for the pros. I don't know if I would use the word suffer, but um, you know, I played with some great guys today. I mean, they were they were thrilled that we were able to go and play, you know, at least nine holes. And um, you know, this is our way of saying thank you for having this event. So this is a very important day, and uh, I gave them some pointers out there. We laughed a little bit, and we were all trying to stay dry, but we had a good time, and I think that's what this day is all about. At Cedar Ridge Country Club, Marty Carpenter, Channel Two works for you. Bishop Kelly has its baseball heroes on and off the field. Marty has more on that story for us.
Last year, Bishop Kelly won its first state championship on the baseball diamond in 25 years. They've never won back-to-back -back titles, but they'd love to do it this year. Oh, this, this year would be 10 times better. Tony Scardino III is the Comets head coach. His son Jeff is a junior who plays center field. And this year they have a very special fan cheering them on. Tony Scardino IV is back home after two tours of duty in Iraq. Our job essentially is to be the eyes, ears, and trigger finger of the uh, battalion commander. It's a dangerous job. Tony was one of the first Marines into Baghdad, and he's no stranger to the streets of Fallujah. There have been moments when he wasn't sure he'd make it home, but what got him through the tough times were the thoughts of his family and a game. You gotta do what you gotta do to come home to Sam. While Tony was fighting a war and following the comets through mail that was often delayed by weeks at a time, his father was keeping him close as well, carrying his picture into every game. The proud dad says the payoff for the sacrifice is to have his son home safe and sound. You know, your kids are always your most important thing and they're all that you have. And, and to entrust them to the military or some people that you don't know, it's a scary thing. And But that was something that Tony always wanted to do since he was six years old. Tony jokingly says he hasn't been the best brother, missing all of Jeff's games for the past three years. But when Jeff finally got a chance to show off for his big brother, he didn't disappoint. He hit a two-run home run. Just one of those moments where you just sit there and you just can't really believe it. It's just kind of surreal. Tony has to be back at Camp Pendleton in San Diego later this month. He's scheduled to return to Iraq in January. Meanwhile, the Comets are now only four victories away from defending their state championship. And if they win this time, it will be a true family affair. A victory in the Cowboys' Big 12 opener this week with Colorado would help for two reasons. Number one, it would move their record to 4-0, but overall, it would make that 4-0 start a little more valid in everybody's eyes. It'll be satisfying for us as a team, as a, as a whole, as coaches, everybody, but we're really not worried about what people think about us because we're going to go out and just play our ball. I think our football team is excited about where we are. Um, there's a lot of talk about the schedule that we've played to get to 3-0. I'm glad that we're at 3-0, but I think they're looking forward to playing Colorado. Rest will also be a key factor. Colorado had to play at Miami last week while the Pokes were home in bed. Well, I was in my bed watching TV in the air condition under the covers, you know, just laying down, whatever, relaxing, just getting ready to play this week. I think it's a huge advantage. I mean, like, you know, we went down to Miami, what, two weeks ago and coming back, and you're a little sluggish when you come back. So, I mean, I think they'll be a little sluggish, but I think the biggest advantage is us being able to watch him on national TV. Also today, the Cowboys talking about what they worked on during their off week, discipline and taking care of the football, two big keys to victory this weekend against Colorado. In Stillwater, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. You can call this game a learning experience. There was a whole lot of education going on out there on the court. The Sooners learn what it's like to be the number five team in the country and have everybody gunning at them. Meanwhile, TU learns they can play with just about anybody. Absolutely. I, I, it's a loss, but we all have to play 27 uh, a, a year and, and uh, something to build off of. Like I said, our, our half of basketball second half was four turnovers. And that is a huge step forward in the right direction for us. But you know, sometimes making mistakes this early in the season is really good for your kids. So um, I'm glad we won, but I'm also um, um, looking forward to correcting some of these mistakes we made. All right, road games up next for both of these teams. OU heading off to Philadelphia to face Villanova on Saturday. Also on Saturday, TU heading down the road to play ORU, the Mayor's Cup on the line. Reporting from the Reynolds Center, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Stacy Permanasud is busy getting ready for the only LPGA event held in her hometown, but not in the way you might think. I haven't... Uh practice much in the last couple days. I've been painting my kitchen and doing normal stuff. Decorating aside, for Stacy, normal stuff means playing great golf. 
She picked up her first career victory earlier this year and quickly learned that with success comes added pressure. You just expect a lot more out of yourself. You had a good week, so you expect to do it every single week. That's kind of tough to live up to. Yeah. And this week won't be like any other. Stacy has a sneaking suspicion she'll be paired with the biggest name in ladies golf, the defending Hammond's Classic champion, Annika Sorenstam. I have a feeling I'm going to be paired with her. I haven't played with her yet. Now, Stacy won't admit that she's under more pressure this week playing in front of her home crowd, but she will admit that outside of the four majors, this is the one tournament she wants to win more than any other. Everybody wants to win at home because, first of all, your fan base is bigger, so it just has more meaning at home. But any tournament to win is a good one, I mean, regardless of location. But this location is special. Cedar Ridge is Stacy's home course, and she likes her chances this weekend. You know, if I can get a couple kinks worked out in the next couple days, there's hope yet. And hope for the hometown girl can go a long way. So Donovan Morgan a chance to get out and run. Cross midfield. Inside the 15. Morgan inside the 5. See ya. Touchdown. Donovan Morgan. Donovan Morgan is the best player in the AF2. So good, in fact, that several NFL teams have come calling for his services. Houston Texans, uh, Green Bay Packers, Kansas City Chiefs, Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, now Cincinnati Bengals. But Morgan turned all those offers down, choosing instead to help the talents pursue an Arena League championship. My teammates, that's the main word that sums it up. If I would have left, I would have been selfish because I'm one of the reasons why we got here. Now to you and me, it may seem crazy to put a shot at the NFL on hold, all for the chance to win an Arena Cup. That's the decision Donovan Morgan has made, and the talents are behind him 100%. I was worried about his decision at first, I'm going to be honest with you, but his... Uh, the answers he gave me and he gave the team were well, that's the only reason that I would want him to stay. You know, he, he came here to win a championship and that's what we're going to try to do. Morgan may still have a chance to join an NFL practice squad, but that's all on hold until after the playoffs. With the Talons, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Marty, over the years, this series has been pretty close. OSU leads at 136 to 133. Pretty tight, my friend. Yeah, pretty close. The close call tonight, though, might be the weather. I've actually seen four, five raindrops. Mother Nature just letting us know that she is a threat this evening. This is just the first of three games these two teams will face off against each other over the weekend. The next two, the series shifts to Oklahoma City in the Bricktown ballpark. Always a big deal, though, when these two teams get together. This series is important to both teams this year, especially. Uh, the Cowboys are fifth in the Big 12 right now. The Sooners are sixth. The Pokes just one game ahead of OU in the standings. Now, that's important because the top eight teams get into the Big 12 tournament, and they both need some wins to fend off Texas Tech and KU. Those are the next two teams down the list. No guarantee for either team, especially if one of these teams can manage a sweep over the weekend. The team that would lose all three would certainly be in trouble. Whether they're at the top of the conference or fighting to stay alive, Bedlam is always a big deal. Well, I think so, and that's why I think this rivalry and, and the Bedlam series in itself is is uh, is outstanding because we kind of take it to the people of Oklahoma. We go to Tulsa, and then we go back to Oklahoma City, and it gives a lot of people an opportunity to see, uh, see us play baseball that might not during the course of the season. I think it's a great opportunity, really, for both universities to be able to go on the road and showcase their baseball programs, and, you know, that's what makes this Bedlam so unique is really we go to the fans, and we're here in Tulsa. We know there's a large contingent of Oklahoma State and University of Oklahoma alumni. So, uh, you know, we're glad to be here in Tulsa. I know our players are very excited about tonight. Now, both coaches told me that the big key to success tonight may just be keeping the raindrops off the field. First pitch coming up at 7.30. I'll have highlights for you right here on Channel 2 tonight at 10. Shaq, should be a great day at the ballpark, weather permitting. All right, thank you, Marty. It didn't look like anyone was going to stop AC Law, and most of the night nobody did. But down the stretch, the Cowboys played just enough defense to fight the law and make sure the law didn't win. Boy, the Cowboys sure have the Longhorns number, don't they? The only problem is they make them play the second half. Yeah, you know, Dallas is nice, but there's nothing quite like the chill of Kansas City, is there? 
Shaq this weekend's trip to El Paso will have a huge effect on the final standings in Conference USA's West Division. A win by the Golden Hurricane puts them a very important full game ahead of the Miners. You know, Al, this isn't the way these are supposed to go this early in the season. September football is supposed to mean an easy win. This one was not easy at all. Starting to hear mention of the P word. That's right, the playoffs. The Hornets now at 500, looking like a team that could be in the NBA's postseason. In fact, that's their expectation. Well, Mike Gundy gets his first victory as head coach of the Cowboys against a Big 12 opponent. And even more importantly, the Cowboys have not been eliminated from bowl contention yet. They need two more victories to get to six. That's the magic number. And it was all a matter of momentum. The Sooners needed to get momentum on their side early, and they just didn't do it. ORU hadn't played a home game since December 7th. I don't care how much you love that mint on your pillow. That's a long time to be on the road. It didn't look like anyone was going to stop AC Law, and most of the night nobody did. But down the stretch, the Cowboys played just enough defense to fight the law and make sure the law didn't win. Boy, the Cowboys sure have the Longhorns number, don't they? The only problem is they make them play the second half. Yeah, you know, Dallas is nice, but there's nothing quite like the chill of Kansas City, is there? <laughs> Shaq this weekend's trip to El Paso will have a huge effect on the final standings in Conference USA's West Division. A win by the Golden Hurricane puts them a very important full game ahead of the Miners. You know, Al, this isn't the way these are supposed to go this early in the season. September football is supposed to mean an easy win. This one was not easy at all. Starting to hear mention of the P word. That's right, the playoffs. The Hornets now at 500, looking like a team that could be in the NBA's postseason. In fact, that's their expectation. Well, Mike Gundy gets his first victory as head coach of the Cowboys against a Big 12 opponent. And even more importantly, the Cowboys have not been eliminated from bowl contention yet. They need two more victories to get to six. That's the magic number. And it was all a matter of momentum. The Sooners needed to get momentum on their side early, and they just didn't do it. ORU hadn't played a home game since December 7th. I don't care how much you love that mint on your pillow. That's a long time to be on the road. Boy, the Cowboys sure have the Longhorns number, don't they? The only problem is they make them play the second half. For the second consecutive year, the Cowboys squander a big first half lead and just end up with more frustration. Everyone expected a blowout, just not this kind. It's caught by the wall gloves, wide open, good night, Vienna! Mike Hamilton dominated on the ground. Straight ahead to the 45, to the 40, to his right, to the 35, 30, 25, 20. Al Pena struck from the air. Pena back to pass, goes quickly over the middle. The pass is tipped, and it's caught by the wall gloves, to the 10, to the 5. Pistols firing, touchdown, the wall gloves! Our game plan was executed to perfection in that first half. But whatever Mac Brown said in the locker room, it worked. Texas scored early. Vince Young goes 81 yards. And often. Keeps it, running straight ahead to the five, and he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. And by the end of the third quarter, the Longhorns had the lead for good. Has time, throws over the middle, and the pass is caught. Touchdown, Texas. It wore us down a little bit. Doesn't have anything to do with, with uh, adjustments or X's nose, in my opinion. It wears down a little bit. We lost, so I mean that's a negative, but we're going to get better. And our goal right now is to win three games and go to a bowl. So Mike Gundy still looking for his first win in the Big 12 as a head coach. The Cowboys would have loved to get this one, knock off the number one team in the country. Still, they say they've got a lot they can build on heading into their bye week. Reporting from Boone Pickens Stadium, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Shaq this weekend's trip to El Paso will have a huge effect on the final standings in Conference USA's West Division. A win by the Golden Hurricane puts them a very important full game ahead of the Miners. This is another step in terms of making a run at the championship and being in that game on December the 3rd. But this game doesn't guarantee you. If you win this game this week, that doesn't guarantee you you're going to be the Western Division champion. It's a monumental step in our quest to be the championship. Well, whenever you win uh, ball games, it builds confidence. And I think each game we've won this year, um, the confidence has kept building. And, um, you know, we're just trying to execute and go out and, and win each game. And they have won some games lately. As a matter of fact, they haven't lost since October 1st. By the way, a win this weekend makes TU officially bowl eligible. Reporting from Skelly Stadium, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Jeff Bardell can hit a golf ball a country mile and as straight as an arrow. And he can do it with one arm. 
it, it really is hard. It's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Jeff lost his right arm when his glove got stuck in this machine at a glass factory in his home state of North Carolina. Life changed just four days before he was due for freshman orientation. That's my first day working with this screw auger and the glove on my right hand got caught in the machine. And as the machine was turning, my arm was getting pulled into the machine. When I think about it, sometimes it seems like a split second. Sometimes it seems like it was one second and it was gone. And then other times it seems like it was five or 10 minutes. After losing his arm, he had to learn how to do everything all over again, from brushing his teeth to gripping a golf club. His secret, he uses his left thumb to stabilize the club instead of a right arm. A lot of those things are real challenges, um, but I'd say the hardest was, was definitely learning how to write. I still haven't learned how to clap yet. And once I figure that out, then you know I'll, I will have accomplished everything. Jeff doesn't just hit the ball really well for a player with two arms. He recently set a world record for the longest one-arm drive, 255 yards, 19 yards better than the previous record. I still think about it sometimes, and just to think that I've done something that nobody else in the world has ever done, it's a pretty cool feeling. When Jeff played at Rima Bible College, he was an eight handicap. Now he admits it's closer to 12. But in his view, handicaps are for golf scores, not for golfers. I believe I'm living proof that just because something bad happens to you doesn't mean your life ends. It just makes it a little more challenging, a little more fun. And that's what the game is really all about. In Broken Arrow, Marty Carpenter, Channel 2 works for you. Now, oh, you get started bright and early on Channel 2 at 11.30 tomorrow. Yeah, you know, Dallas is nice, but there's nothing quite like the chill of Kansas <laughs> City, is there? The last two times this tournament was played here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, the Sooners were the team cutting down the nets. Mm -hmm. But this year, they've got the big target on their backs. They're the number one seed. Kansas City is, uh, you know, kind of has a... Big 12 tournament feel to it. And OU knows the feeling pretty well. The Sooners have won this tournament three of the last four years, but they've never done it as the number one seed. Now we know it's strictly about business at this tournament. If we're um, one seed or a 12 seed, we're still going to try to play hard and go out here and win it. So, I mean, um, the seed, seeding, um, it really doesn't matter like, what seed you are. We just want to go out here and win it. You guys have never been a number one seed in this tournament. Does it change the way you approach it or the way other people approach you? No. I mean, our attitude and effort this week in practice has been unbelievable. I mean, everyone's energy and enthusiasm and everything is running on a high right now. And our best practices have been this week. So, I mean, everyone's doing good. Are we ready to play? You know, we've, we've been here. We've enjoyed our season. We just we want to keep it going. Now, after their workout today, the Sooners stuck around to watch Nebraska play Missouri, watch Missouri beat Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Drew Lavender told me that he was going to stick around to watch this game because he gets something out of watching a team and scouting a team in person as opposed to just watching them on tape. All right, don't forget OU tomorrow at 1130 against Missouri. That wraps it up from here. We'll see you tonight at 10. Marty Carpenter joins us now. Lots of basketball to talk about this weekend. Yeah, if you like round ball, today was your day. A lot of college basketball, a lot of basketball everywhere. Starting with the Sooners, and they've had a tough time scoring lately, but they've been good enough to hang on to the 14th spot in the top 25. The first obstacle on the Sooners' road to the Big 12 regular season title, that would be Nebraska. Big game for Kevin Bookout. The steal and go, big fella, throw it down. Look at the handles. Oh, you up 33-25 at the half. Bookout finished with 14. Here come the men of corn. Charles Richardson all day long hits the three, and it is a two-point game. After an OU turnover, hey, what's the worst that could happen? That's the worst that could happen. Nebraska takes a one-point lead with about 5.6 seconds to play. Last chance for OU. Terrell Everett tries to do it himself. Gets a pretty good look, but iron unkind. Nebraska wins 59-58. OU loses its Big 12 opener. The Pokes mosey into Big 12 play at 10 and 4, thanks mostly to Mario Bogan. When James on Curry gets rolling, this team could be a player in the conference, but did he have it going tonight? Eddie and the Cowboys open it up against Quinn Snyder and Mizzou. Bogan had another nice game working on the low block. Gets the bucket on the jump hook, and then Bogan working hard to clean up the garbage as well. Off the James on Curry miss, gets two of his team high 14 points. But Mizzou got a huge game from Jimmy McKinney. He nails the three from way outside. Gives the Tigers a four point lead with five minutes to play. Then Missouri puts some icing on the cake. Eddie's not gonna be happy with the way no one gets back on defense here. OSU drops its big 12 opener as well. 69-61 of the final. ORU hadn't played a home game since December 7th. I don't care how much you love that mint on your pillow. That's a long time to be on the road. 
Caleb Green had 19 points in the first half alone. ORU up big at the break against Western Illinois, and Caleb was putting on a show. Nice move down low. Green has 32 points on the day, one shy of his career high set in the last game. Then it's Larry Owens, big hair Lair with the crossover and the finger roll. 11 points, nine boards. Then Owens working in the post. Dishes to Caleb, 65 points for Caleb in his last two games. He also had 13 rebounds today. Moses Sayambe, 13 points for him. That's also a career high. The Golden Eagles roll to 3-0 in the Midcon, 83-66 the final. Same two teams, different gender. The Lady Golden Eagles beat Western Illinois in the Midcon Tourney Finals last spring. ORU down 39-17 in the first half, and then Alicia Turek got her groove on. Inside with the layup, and trust me, there was more Turek. This time on the turnaround jumper, she had 13 points. All of them came in the second half. Can anyone help her out? Jenny Harden with the jumper. She had nine. ORU cuts the lead to four. Then Western Illinois goes to Deuce. Deuce, biggest woman I've ever seen. Zane Talani also had 10 block shots. ORU now 2-1 and one in the Midcon. They head to Valpo on Monday. Tulsa trying to right the ship tonight at Texas Pan Am. They need overtime, but they get the win 70-66. TU now 5-8. and eight. The Hurricane opens conference play Wednesday night at UAB. We're back with more in a minute, including the Hornets looking for their fourth win in a row.